Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you'll learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secure retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in. Because Big Mike has got the mic, starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fund. I'm the Big Mike, Mike Zlatnik. Welcome. Today we have a special guest, um, the one and only, the famous Joe Lieber, uh, nicknamed Ghettoologist, because he's coming from Cleveland and he buys fantastic cash flow properties. Because they cash flow so well, people think it's the ghetto. Uh, <laughs> but of course it's not. In any case, Joe, welcome. Thanks for having me, Mike. Thanks for coming on board. It's a pleasure and a privilege. Thank so you. let's talk a little bit about uh, Cleveland, Ohio. This is your uh, home. First it of is. all, how, how is the weather in Cleveland in Cleveland right now? It's this late December 2017, uh, probably nice and cold. Oh, my goodness. You bet, buddy. It's probably 23 degrees here today. And uh, it's cold. No matter what they say, you never get used to it. I'm a lifelong Clevelander, born and raised, and it's still, I just have a hard time getting used to the cold. <laughs> well, uh, I love cold too. How about snow? Is there any snow today? You know, it's not today, but last week the kids had a snow day, which is really cool because typically we don't get snow days before Christmas. Usually they, the snow days for the kids are between January and like, you know, end of March. So, had our first snow day. I was out running the snowblower. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It's always great to have a white Christmas, white New Year, uh, but uh, the weather is changing, so who knows what's going to happen uh, this year. Hopefully, you'll have a white Christmas. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about Cleveland, uh, the economy, uh, kind of what you're doing in Cleveland, your business. We'd love to hear uh, your story, your investing in real estate, and uh, why Cleveland? Sure. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, you know, I was just reading the other day on CNN Money, and there was an article out there saying that Cleveland, Ohio might actually be the hottest real estate market in the country right now. And I just couldn't believe it when I saw that. I was blown away because typically I would never think of this Rust Belt area community up here in, in Cleveland being the hottest in the country. But wow. that's what they are saying. And I, I believe it. I believe it because the properties here, we are a cash flow state. And these properties here are allowing people to buy these homes and, uh, and, and, and cash flow crazy. And we're still below where they were in, in you know, 2005, 2006. So there still are great deals to be had out there right now. There's a lot of stuff going on in Cleveland, Ohio right now. Uh, you know, we all know the, the big one, LeBron James, Duncan basketballs, you know, it's a yeah. big hype for the city. But outside of that, you know, the Cleveland Clinic is huge here. There's tech companies coming here. Uh, the city's doing all these different things to bring business and industry. Downtown Cleveland, for, for those of, uh, people that don't know, uh, you know, it was a ghost town 10, 15 years ago. And now the city is alive, is alive. I have a friend from Arizona that comes in to Cleveland. He buys real estate here. And he always will be downtown. He'll say, listen, listen, quiet. Shh, shh, you hear that? Like, no, hear what? What are you talking about? He goes, right there, that's the heartbeat of America right there, buddy. I said, oh, my goodness, it's so funny. But it's true. There's so many crazy cool things going on here right now with industry and, and businesses and, and, of course, the real estate market. It's unbelievable. Wow, Joe, that's, that's awesome to hear, uh, the revival of, of Cleveland, Cleveland, the revival of the heartbeat of America. I think that was the, the Chevrolet. I guess I don't know if they have a facility in Cleveland, but the heartbeat of America is Cleveland, not Chevrolet. They do, for sure. So, talk to me a little bit about the type of properties. One thing you mentioned, uh, and this is a great, great fact, that I'm assuming these properties are selling below the reconstruction cost. And that's probably great value investing. Uh, as uh, many of the listeners know, there are three ways to value residential real estate. Most uh, common approach is the comparables approach. It's what the properties are selling at today. Uh, but there's also an income approach and a cost-based approach. And the cost approach uh, is the foundation of new construction. If you build something, it costs money. If you can buy something that's already been built, and sometimes repair it if it needs uh, renovations. These properties are still solid properties, but investors could buy them at a fraction of the new construction cost. 
So they're buying them below the reconstruction cost. I'm assuming that's the case for Cleveland for a lot of the properties that you deal with. Absolutely. Is, is that right? That is right. Absolutely. Let me give you, let me give you an example or two or three examples of what's being purchased here. So example one is you can buy a home on the west side of Cleveland, which is where I typically deal for, for Clevelanders, pretty much uh, Cleveland separated by the east side and the west side. And I, I'm a west side guy. And uh, here's what you can buy. So you can buy a home, rent ready. Uh, we do two types of, of, of rentals. We do rent to own or we're doing section eight. So I'll give you a section eight example. So we can buy a property all in with some new capital expenditures that have been done, CapEx we call it, like roofs, windows, siding, gutters, kitchens, baths, things of that nature, for about 65 to $70,000. That home is renting for $1,000 a month from Section 8. Wow. It's, it's amazing. It's a and strong cash flow. Wow, that's a it's very a strong, strong cash flow. flow. And then we're also seeing that, it, it, depending on, on the, the neighborhood and what the property calls for, that same property we can do a rent-to-own on for about eight eight fifty dollars a month for the same price point, sixty-five dollars or $70,000. That's pretty decent too. And, and uh, rent to own, I guess, uh, tenants think of the the property as their own, and they take really good care of it. That's one of the benefits of the rent to own approach. They do, and we're still way below. So these homes that I'm selling for sixty five or seventy thousand dollars, you know, pre two thousand and seven, they were selling between ninety five and one hundred and five thousand. So if we're, if we're still going back to that, it's, things are still going up here. That home three years ago, you could have bought for $35,000. So we are getting massive appreciation here when you look at it on that grand scale. Right, right, right. So where it's going to go, Mike, I don't know. We're hoping it still continues to rise, and it is. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, uh, I, I, I had another guest on a podcast on the previous podcast, Jay. Jason Hartman, he talked uh, a lot about similar type of properties in other cities. And the same concept, the uh, recent tax cut by uh, Republican uh, government and uh, let's call it the Trump tax cut, uh, incentivize investment in the middle America and this incentivize investing in the big cities with expensive real estate because of deductibility of real estate uh, taxes and, and uh, mortgage interest is going down. So uh, I know you're not a, you're not into politics at all. I'm not going to talk much about the subject, but what I wanted to say is, I guess Cleveland is becoming even more attractive for um, investors to participate in the growth and recovery of the city. So I uh, I, I share your optimism, and um, wanted to talk about the power of uh, your cash flowing properties. We did a loan. Uh, I did a loan for my self directed IRA to you. Um, I think we did two loans, each was like 55,000 and each yeah. backed by uh, two properties. Yep. And um, the loan has interest rate of 15%. Uh, and it's a five year fully amortized loan. And the cash flow from these properties is so strong that you could pay fully amortized loan at 15% hard money rate and still pay it off in five years completely. Now that, that's what's beautiful about it. So I'm gonna let you into my little secret here. Right now in my portfolio, I have about 135 single family homes. Almost all of my homes are paid for. And the secret on how I did it was what you're talking about right here. I bought all these homes, I would pay cash, just like I did with you, Mike, and then I would call a private money investor like yourself, overpay on the rate, because it didn't matter to me, it was easy loan to get, and I put on a five year amortization and I could pay that house off. It would break even, I wasn't cash flowing, but I will break even, maybe even lose a little bit. I might lose maybe a hundred, hundred, couple hundred bucks every quarter or something, but it doesn't matter because in five years, the entire thing is paid for. And that's how I built my entire portfolio was on these little five-year amortizations, fully amortized notes, and it, it, it's amazing. And it could still be done. The market is still calling for that. So. I love it. Well, wow, that's a brilliant idea. I wanted to point this out to the listeners of this podcast, Joe's idea. It's probably one of the most powerful concepts uh, in real estate is how you can um, buy a property and everyone is used to a 30-year mortgage. And it is typical and common. And people take 30 years to pay it off. 
But what Joe did, he forgot uh, the cash flow for the next five years. Uh, and the trade-off is accelerated payoff. So every dollar of cash flow he gets, uh, he doesn't even mind dipping a little bit into negative territory. He just pays down the mortgage on fast acceleration. So instead of going on a 30-year schedule, he went on a five-year schedule. And it looks unbelievable for most people. and Most people don't buy it this way. But the technique is extremely powerful. If you use it, you could pay down your mortgage completely or pay it off in five years. Isn't that remarkable? Joe, I have to uh, applaud you for this you. brilliant approach. It's, uh, uh, it, it, you're sacrificing for five years to get a free ride for many years after. It's like building for retirement. Some people exactly. stash away from retirement. You just pay off the mortgages and have free and clear properties that give you a great cash flow. That's your retirement plan. It's my forced savings account, and I'm okay with it. Because, see, here's the thing that, that we can never get away from in real estate. It's all about the cash flow. I mean, that's what enables me to live the lifestyle that I want to live is because of cash flow. It's December. It's cold outside. I, I don't really want to go out there and start hustling and slamming deals together. That's why I have these properties. That's why everyone should have these properties. They have the cash flow to pay your bills, your monthly bills, get it covered by cash flow real estate. And then everything else is fun. You know the mindset, Mike, of what it feels like to go to work for fun and not because you have to, it is amazing. It's different. Everybody should experience that. It can absolutely be done, as we all know. That's why we're here on this podcast, through real estate. Yeah, Joe, that's great. Uh, you, have, you have achieved financial freedom. Um, uh, you gotten out of the red race, as per Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, yes. So... <laughs> <laughs> on five-year AMS, that's amazing. So, yeah, five-year get out of the rat race uh, approach. Yeah, you could do it with real yes. estate. I don't know what other asset class you could do it with, but definitely you could do it with the uh, investment real estate in Cleveland, Ohio. That, that's phenomenal. Absolutely. So, um, you and you did mention this, uh, but it sounds to me these great cash flow properties, a, as surprising as it sounds, everybody has talked about no appreciation in the Rust Belt, but they are appreciating now, and there is a remarkable revival of mid-America happening. So um, maybe it's LeBron James. He came it back to Cleveland. Maybe, maybe it's a LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Got to give him the credit. So he's a, he's a great player. Although I have to say, I'm still Michael Jordan fan. Are you? Uh, yeah. Let me show you something. I, I don't know if you can see behind me. There's this Russian wooden doll right over there. This is the thing. I don't know if this is going to go video or audio on this podcast. This is Matryoshka. And, and you see who is on Matryoshka? Michael Jordan. Michael this is Jordan. my favorite uh, professional athlete. I'm sorry, LeBron, if I offend you, but uh, I'm still uh, loyal to Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's okay. That was in more in our era there. We were, we were kids when LeBron was, or when uh, Jordan was dunking balls on TV. I think we're yeah, it, it was exciting. I, I grew up playing basketball and really enjoyed uh, Michael Jordan playing. Sure. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a different ball game nowadays. The, uh, the new king of the th in town. Uh, l let's talk a little more about um, financeability of these investment properties. So you finance them easily at hard money rates. It's very expensive yes. money. You're paying 15% rate. I know some people paying 12, some people paying less, some people paying more. But generally, uh, the money is av available uh, at, at the high cost. What about low cost? What about uh, financeabilities of these properties with the banks? Uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac investment uh, loans, maybe local community banks, portfolio lenders. Uh, have you had any success or do you know any people who have had success financing these turnkey properties uh, or these investment properties uh, with the banks? I do. So uh, for, for the last couple of years, it's always been all cash, uh, the investors I've been dealing with. But over the summer, I had a group of investors come in who wanted to use the power of leverage, which I can respect that. So this was a kind of a, a test. And they did finance the properties. And it worked. And they financed very well. They appraised. There was no issues, no problems. It worked like a charm. And they used two different lenders uh, to, to finance. One was guaranteedrate.com. I think they're out of Chicago. But that's who one of the guys used. Another one used Quicken Loans, which is a, a lender here based in Detroit and Cleveland. And, uh, and they financed the properties. 
So yeah, that, that's yeah. great. I, I actually have a number of loans with Quicken Loans. I have some investment properties uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, personally, and um, I finance them with Quicken Loans. And those guys are pretty good. I, I have to attest. If you have good credit, then you can go through the traditional underwriting uh, with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac investment type of properties. Quicken Loans is probably a pretty good shop. So I uh, I, I totally understand and, and concur with with that recommendation. And Mike, also for the last couple of properties, I've been doing some owner financing for some of my investors. Uh, we've been doing 50% down. I've been carrying a 50% seller financed, fully amortized mortgage to over five years. So that's an option too for some folks. Talk to me a little bit about that. That's a brilliant idea. I, I've heard about this many, many times from a number of uh, brothers from the Collective Genius. By the way, uh, those of you uh, who are listening to the podcast, uh, you know that I go to the uh, Collective Genius Mastermind, and Joe is a brother from the uh, CG Mastermind, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal group. Wanted to put on a great word. Many, many phenomenal people come from that mastermind. Uh, but the reason I mention this is another guy in the Collective Genius, uh, Eddie Speed, I hope he becomes a guest of this podcast in the near future. He too recommends this approach highly. He actually has a big note trading platform, and Joe is creating seller finance note here. So Joe, talk a little bit about what you're doing and what kind of note you have and what kind of rate and how much down payment they put and so on. Yeah, so what, you know, what I've been doing is uh, on some of these properties, uh, you know, it, it's a good cash flow generator for me. It's something different. It removes me from the operations side of it, you know. And what I've been doing is financing notes for people. So we'll take a property that I might sell for $60,000. And I've been asking for 50% down, so $30,000 down. And then $30,000, I carry a note against it. Usually it's a 10% interest on a five-year amortization. And uh, the property will still cash flow a few hundred bucks, usually in that situation. And it's a quick payoff. It's an accelerated payoff. And it, it works very well. And, and uh, it, I've been doing it, just started doing it over the summer pretty much just to get things cruising. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. So for, for the listeners, let me spell this thing out a little bit uh, more. So 50% uh, down, 50% loan is a low risk uh, type of proposition. So investors have a lot of skin in the game. They put in 30% or so $50% down. They're getting um, the property. They own the property. And you as a note holder or, or a seller who got half the money in cash and half the money as a note, what you have is you have great cash flow without ownership. So um, I've spent uh, my last seven years, actually eight years of my life uh, doing hard money loans. And I can tell you being uh, a lender is often better than a being a landlord. So I'd be able to back to differ, but at least you don't have to deal with tenants and toilets per se. So having a promissory note that pays you 10% and has a low uh, LTV or loan to value ratio of 50% or 60% is fairly safe and the yield is high. So um, what you wind up with, great cash flow, no responsibilities of ownership, and uh, it's, it's a great deal for the seller. So if you can do that, um, you wind up with a phenomenal product. So Joe, I think you, sooner or later, uh, on one hand, you, you're a borrower of hard money. On the other hand, you're a lender. You are exactly. you're holding these notes. Yeah, yeah. And as I mentioned, these notes at 50% loan to value um, are very tradable. You could sell them easily. Um, so Eddie Speed has notes exchange. And again, uh, hopefully he'll come uh, on the podcast. He'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but what Joe could do is he could take this this note and if he wants to get liquidity, he can easily sell it, probably get the full par value, maybe even a little more if the uh, yields compress and people are willing to, to buy the note with 8% yield and uh, Joe has 10% uh, coupon on the, on the note, he'd sell it a little bit more than it's worth. So it's a pretty powerful concept. So that's great. Um, and local bank financing is great too. Um, there are other people who I know who buy these investment properties uh, with traditional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, 20 to 25% down product, and uh, they're able to take advantage of financeability offered through the government with rates in the 5% range. Um, uh, the 
Federal Reserve uh, Bank announced, John Thiel announced interest rate increases. I'm not sure, Joe, if you've heard about it. She, she announced it a couple of days ago. But these increases uh, are not that terrible. They just, you know, a few, few small quarterly increases, 2018, and then uh, a little more afterwards. And, um, uh, but if you remember, a lot of these 30-year mortgages used to be 6%. We're below sort of the, the average, and it would be expected the rates will go up a little bit. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, DF. So this was, by the way, this was a great, you gave two phenomenal ideas, uh, the seller finance notes and then the five-year how to buy and hold. Yes. By the way, it's the same thing. <laughs> what you just did is you flipped the table. You went from one side of the table to being a borrower, to the other side of the table being um, uh, being a lender. So do you have any other great advice like this? I, I love this idea. Uh, any other phenomenal real estate advice to uh, my listeners? I do. I want to I want to talk to you really quick about a strategy that I had to learn through the school of hard knocks. I mean, Mike, I've been in this business 20 years now, and I, it has been a long way up. And I'm going to drop you a couple nuggets here to, to give the listeners a chance to have the keys to the elevator when I had to take the steps all the way to the top. So here it is, all right? I'm going to drop you some great stuff here. When you're doing rental properties, if you're not doing Section 8, that's one method, always do rent to own. And here's why. It's a way of vesting the tenant to the home. See, when you regular rentals, they come in, they might put a security deposit down and then call you for everything that's not perfect with the property. Plus, they're not vested, so they're, you know, not, might not pay their rent on time or not really want to take care of the property. On a rent to own, all it really is is a lease with an option to buy. But I require a larger down payment, usually a few thousand dollars, that's non-refundable, and here's the big one. They are responsible for all maintenance to the property. I always tell them, I'm more like your bank, not your landlord. So if, the, if they clog the toilet or the hot water tank goes out, they are responsible for making that repair. Helps because they me. think they own the property. All right, that's what they think. They are like in home ownership and training. You know, it, it, we're working to help them restore their credit, get longer job time, make more money, whatever the case may be, and help them procure financing. We're giving them the opportunity for the American dream. We really want to help people own a piece of that, own a piece that they want to be homeowners, and, and, and that's what we want to do. That's why it's a phenomenal uh, program to help people become own, homeowners at the same time as helping us landlords with no maintenance phone calls. They're now vested at the property. There's a perfect marriage there with a couple thousand dollars down. And, and on the properties I do rent to own, I deliberately not do certain things. Like I might paint the first floor of the home on a colonial, but the second floor, all the bedrooms, I won't paint them because I want them to come into the property and paint the bedrooms the colors they like because nobody is going to paint bedrooms to a house, put down a large down payment, and not pay their rent next month. They're gonna pay their rent. Joe, this is brilliant. Uh, I, I love the idea. I, I know a number of other people who do this, and this is, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, your advice number three probably should be number one. Uh, <laughs> don't rent properties, but uh, uh, rent to own. Uh, lease, lease, lease plus option. Uh, and then the things you do, uh, not letting, uh, not painting the second floor is a brilliant idea. I, I love it. So, uh, what happens? Um, so, typically, how much deposit do they put in? Well, what's their down payment or deposit? Is it a couple of months? Is it more than? See, if the property is, let's just say, you give them a lot, an option to buy the property for seventy thousand dollars, and okay. um, the rent is a thousand dollars a month, how much do they bring to the deal to get into the property? So, I'll have them bring usually two thousand dollars down, plus the first month's rent. So it's almost like a double deposit, but it's non-refundable. So say $2,000 down, non-refundable, $1,000 a month. So what happens if they don't, um, don't pay? They lose the deposit, they lose the option to buy the property. Uh, right. So you have a more safety. So you have a, like a double deposit instead of a single month deposit. Correct. And it's just a, it's a standard eviction if they don't pay. Because it's just a lease with an option to buy. So there's no land contract or contract for deed involved. Right. Very easy standard eviction. Uh, understood. And um, uh, 
uh, what percent of the of the of the folks that sign up for a program like this actually uh, buy the house from you? Okay, so here's the thing. I deal in a lot of C neighborhoods. So I'm going to give you some statistics. So since 2007, I have written about 850 leases from people coming and going and new acquisitions and turnovers. And to make a long story short, only one person has been able to buy the home. Wow. So That's the numbers are very low, unfortunately, but we always try to help people. We give them credit repair handbooks. We, 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 do, uh, we advise them if they want to know how to own a home. But unfortunately, you know, the situations and things change in people's lives. And by the time they get to the point where they actually want to buy the home or, or to buy the home, something usually changes. Someone's either they're having a baby, need a bigger home, or they're divorcing and they can't afford the property anymore, or someone lost a job, or, or, or if they do get qualified for a loan, like, well, we don't know if we want exactly this home. We might want something a little bit different. And, and then usually they don't end up buying that home for whatever reason. That's a phenomenal statistics that very, very, very low percentage of people actually convert, but you as a landlord get a tremendous benefit of them thinking they own the property and taking much better care of it. Yes, absolutely. So this is, this is very brilliant for, for all of you folks who have bought or planning to buy or already own real estate, uh, doing uh, rent to own or lease option is a phenomenal uh, consideration. To, uh, to improve your cash flow, to reduce your maintenance, and to uh, motivate, it, motivate your tenants to take care of the properties as if it were their own. And Mike, let me add one more comment to that. I always want to see people get a little piece of the American dream and own their properties. I have bent over backwards over the years to try to help people procure financing. I have actually went and got them credit repair companies to help them. I've even got them secured credit cards and show them here by making these payments, you can rebuild your credit. So I always lead people in the direction, but as we all know, making them drink the water is a whole nother story. So I, I just want to put it out that yes, it's a great benefit to the landlord, but it, it, it's a great benefit to the tenant too, if they'll follow the program, but they just don't always do unfortunately. Uh, Joe, I, I know you and I know how much you do and, and you, you, you help and you help from the heart. So uh, I, I, I know you genuinely try to help them. If they're not ready for your help, unfortunately, they're not ready. Uh, but I, I, I think you, um, you're onto something very powerful. And those few Thank who you. actually do convert uh, and they buy the, the house, uh, it, it becomes a, uh, a great story of American dream. So it I, does. I, I, I think it's, uh, it's almost like a service. You, you're, giving, you're giving from your heart just – not everybody's ready to receive. So yep. that's great. Um, what do you think is happening uh, in the United States in general? The stock market has gone through the roof. Um, the real estate seems to be recovering. Do you think we're going to continue to see this uh, momentum uh, for the next number of years? And some people get nervous a little bit about the market conditions. What is your view of the overall economy and real estate in, in, in the United States going into 2018? Things are cooking again. People are employed. People are making money. People are spending money. It's crazy. It's exciting. I'm so glad to be a part of this again because obviously we all, most of us have lived through this you know, massive decline we saw here. I'm enjoying the ride. I, I, I think we got many, many more years uh, before we start seeing a decline or, or another recession. Uh, I, I just, the economy is rolling. Let's enjoy it. Let's all prosper together and, uh, and see where this takes us. Joe, that, that's been uh, very helpful. Thank you kindly for sharing your views. Uh, for the listeners, um, do you have a good contact information? Is there a website? Uh, how would people want to, if they want to invest in Cleveland, they, they've listened to the Big Mike Fund podcast and uh, they love learning a little more about you. Maybe they want to buy a house from you. How would they reach out to you? Sure. Well, here, uh, just, just call me in my office. I'm, I'm, a, look, I'm a very personal guy. I'm pretty easy to get to. I don't hide behind uh, phones or admins or secretaries. Just call me. Uh, area code 440-387-4800. And I'm an extension two. That's simple. If you call me, just tell me you heard me on the Big Mike, uh, Big Mike Fun podcast. So I, I, I know the reference the call a little bit. And uh, you know, I also check me out at clevelandinvestor.com. 
And you can always shoot me an email. It's rebroker216 at gmail.com. Joel, thank you for sharing. That's been great. Really appreciate you coming on the podcast. And um, uh, looking forward to see you at the next Collective Genius Mastermind. We just came back from the event in um, uh, San Diego. And it was nice and warm. That was a big change, by the way, coming back <laughs> from uh, Southern California when the weather was in the uh, mid-70s, uh, landing in uh, uh, JFK in New York City. And it was 20 degrees windy cold uh similar to new york similar to cleveland it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was cold it was cold yeah so but anyway all right joe thank you kindly i appreciate you and uh merry christmas happy new year a wonderful merry holidays christmas. thank you mike thank you joe talk bye to bye. you later take care bye-bye thank you for listening to the big mike fun podcast to receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fun Book, head to BigMikeFun.com or visit Amazon and type Mike's slot in. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.